what well, every blessing to you all and welcome back to another walking talking pulpit video and uh, like I said during my last short clip which was called massacre I would Lord willing come to a new location a prettier location and spend a few moments uh, speaking about certain subjects which are of interest to me another very old wall perhaps a thousand years old I don't know England has a lot of history and there were many parts to England which are still to be explored and like I said last time I came down here maybe three weeks ago for the first time was very impressed with this particular area and I thought I would return Lord willing and do another walking talking pulpit video the weather is glorious mid to late twenties a light wind this is very much open air pulpit weather as well but as I am walking stretching my legs I thought I would attempt to kill two birds with one stone maybe two or three years ago I was able to go out for a walk three or four maybe five times a week at the heights and I was able to walk four and a half miles in around 70 minutes it's been a while since I've last done that so it would be interesting to see if I could still do it in such a short period of time not sure perhaps but check this wall out these walls are so interesting old picturesque very nostalgic well I thought I would spend a few moments today discussing some of the problems in America the riots demonstrations it's been going on for quite a while now and it goes back to a guy called Floyd who was restrained held uh, on the ground police officer put his knee at the back of his uh, neck and he held him there for a period of time there's an account similar to that back in the Old Testament when uh, I think it was King Saul and uh, Joshua found enemies of the Lord and decided to pin them down hold them down for a period of time demonstrating victory of course of course for the Old Testament you're dealing with nations whereas the New Testament you're dealing with individuals everyday people capital punishment just for the record is biblical it's found in both testaments uh, the Lord said if you live by the sword you would die by the sword Peter told you to pray for those in authority and he mentioned the king which in his day was Nero and also Titus Paul told you that the powers that be are ordained of God so if you are a Christian if you are a Bible believing Christian and there are very few of us now I know but if you are you are to pray for your government whether local or general or in America a local or federal and that includes the police officers paramedics firefighters the whole caboodle such a beautiful day well anyway this police officer has been charged with third degree murder and we will see what happens whether or not he is thrown 
to the wharfs, there's a lot of pressure to prosecute the other officers who stood by and watched the entire incident take place. Just for the record, more white people are shot dead by police in America than black people. Check out these old gates. The gates of hell shall never prevail against the church. Matthew chapter 16. Not quite sure what uh, is in here. Very beautiful house. Looks like a mansion. Incredible. This is a very nice part of town, incidentally. A very affluent, nice part of town. And yet they've got sin problems here, as have people down town. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's not just the poor on Skid Row, it's the wealthy as well. Mankind needs a saviour and the police officer who killed Floyd needs to be saved and Floyd, if he wasn't saved, also needed to be saved. We don't know of course whether or not Floyd was saved. We may see some interesting wildlife as we walk down this very nice road or pathway. Well, the hysteria has continued for several days now, like I say. And you all know that there are three groups that pretty much control this world. They have the media on their side. They are incredibly uh, powerful, privileged. And if I was to name one of the three or two, of the three, or even three of the three. A beautiful chirping bird coming from somewhere. I can't see it, but I can hear it. You know that I would be censored and quite possibly kicked off social media. There's not really, uh, there's no real uh, free speech anymore. Even in America, people are very careful what they say now. And that's a Sad sign of the times. Well, people are marching, not only in the US, but in the UK. Repeating certain slogans, which I better not speak about, otherwise I may be censored. And I'm not exaggerating uh, the powers that be are very sensitive uh, when it comes to uh, what you shouldn't say or do. Just been a few moments up here. It's unfortunate that we've lost so much of our uh, freedom, as it were, rights to say and do this and that. I think in some ways we've given up. We have forfeited. What we used to enjoy, take for granted. Looks like a private uh, golf course there. I don't know. But as far as we are concerned, as a saved people, we are citizens of New Jerusalem. Our rights are limited. We don't march, we don't protest, we don't kick off, we don't whine or grumble when things go against us. Maybe we should, but I don't think so. Nowhere in the Word of God are you told to take a public stand uh, for the ills 
of society. You are to pray uh, for those in society, like I say, government especially, local, national, federal, if you are in America or wherever you live, makes no difference. We live in the Laodicea era, I think we all know that, and the term Laodicea means the people, people's rights. And if you go back to the 1960s in America, you have people like Martin Luther King marching, and he was very close to the Kennedys, and also uh, Johnson, LBJ. He was able to get many white Americans to support him and his cause. Slavery was eventually uh, rescinded to the uh, bin, or trash, as the Americans say. And since 1962-63, minority groups in America have continued to flourish. They are now, rep they are now uh, well represented in all areas of not just governments, but the private sector as well. Very interesting stream here. Very clean as well, interestingly. But the moment something happens, the moment somebody from their community is arrested, detained, and should a death occur, it's a huge story all over the world. White people are more likely to be arrested and uh, shot by police in America, like I say. If you are a working class uh, white male, you're also going to experience things that <clears throat> others do not. So of course you have no pressure group behind you. You are very much on your own. When it comes to marching, we could march. I saved people. We've got a lot to be uh, grieved about. Our God is cursed 24 7. We are rejected for promotion, treated uh, with absolute contempt. Nobody speaks out for us, nobody represents us. But that's okay, one day we will get everything we will reign with the Lord for a thousand years so we're not looking for compensation we're not looking for this or that we're not looking for wrongs to be put right justice yes would be nice but I've been alive long enough to know that justice isn't always forthcoming it's not uh, beneficial for the powers that be to give us sometimes what we would like. Also, we're not one of the three pressure groups that have the media's attention, politicians, and the apostate church. We are a called out people. We are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. We're told to suffer the reproach of the Lord outside of the gate outside of the city and one of the reasons why so many people are so upset is because they think this world is all there's ever going to be they're living for the here and now but of course we are living for eternity we've already overcome we've already been pardoned and predestinated to be conformed to the image of God's Son. Unfortunately, some of these people that are marching offer themselves as 
believers, Christians. You were told not to yoke up with unsaved people. You were told to be separate. How can two walk together unless they are united? If a division takes place or occurs, chances are the Christian is the one who's going to compromise. It's always that way, isn't it? It's never the world, it's always the Christian. That's a big bird. Look at the wingspan. Wow. Almost like an eagle. Let's see if I can catch up with that. Women were forced back to work uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. That meant less time with their children, which isn't good, obviously. Uh, Men were expected to work longer hours. There it is. Which. I'm trying to hide from me now. <laughs> Which is also not overly good. Not quite sure what that is actually. Wingspan, like I say, and the water is very clean as well, which is quite surprising. All the litter and uh, filth that is thrown in. Just get one more shot. If you're not pre-millennial, you are obviously post-millennial or a-millennial. You are hoping that this life will get better for you. You want more rights. You want to be heard. You want to march. You'll even kill in order to be heard. If we stand up for what we believe in, we are arrested, incarcerated, and in some cases, We may lose our lives. But this is the final church. Laodicea, church of the people, for the people. They have no interest in God. They despise him. They despise the Bible. And they would much... Uh, Rather throw the Bible down the drain if they could. Sad times, but what do you expect when the blind lead the blind? When I was growing up, I knew then that things weren't quite right, and I saw many injustices, and I saw many pressure groups, minority groups, calling the shots. I saw British politicians panicking, uh, falling over themselves to appease the minority of minorities. And yet, shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't the majority be heard? Shouldn't things go according to the will of the majority? 
not the minority, well of course not. Everything now is all back to front. It's all skew with. It's a mess. It's a joke. And of course it will only get worse. In some ways we are very much swimming against the current. Everything is going against us. And yet at the same time, everything is going to plan. The word of God said in the last days, men will be lovers of their own selves, denying the power thereof, despising dignitaries, kicking against authority, demanding this and that, and of course the politicians and the apostate church, like I say, fall over themselves to give such people what they want, and eventually it's going to be anarchy, more anarchy, and absolute despair. This is also the bad fruit of evolution. Spoilt children, very privileged children, in fact most of the protesters are white middle class people from very privileged backgrounds, making the most noise, demanding this and that. And I know it's tempting for Christians to perhaps get involved, but this is now world people. If you were to fix all of the problems in this world, which you couldn't, but if you were, you're still going to die one day. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Without a saviour, without a payment for sin, it's all in vain. It can prevail nothing. These are problems, issues, and I don't uh, reject that. But I'm not going to waste my time getting involved with unsaved people who have uh, who have no interest in the Lord, are wanting to do their own thing, fly their own kites, as it were. My purpose is to get the gospel out, as should yours. And don't worry, one day all will be sorted out. The police officer will stand trial probably next year or the following. I would guess he will be found guilty and probably get 25 years, perhaps 30 years. Some of his colleagues may also have to be held to account and they too may also be incarcerated for many, many years. Well, if I had my way, I would force these criminals to go back to their communities, tied up the mess that they have created, shops which they have looted, businesses which they have ruined. In fact, just last night, they targeted a orphanage, a children's home. They tried to burn it to the ground. The firefighters were called and upon arrival were unable to gain entrance because the protesters were not allowing them to go in. And they had to call for the police to assist them. And the police and the firefighters had to team up to force their way in to rescue the children. There's been nothing in the media about this, just one article. Over the last three weekends, we've seen people at Hyde Park in London protesting uh, peacefully against the lockdown. And of course, Hyde Park is Speaker's Corner, the only place in the UK where there was just about free speech left. And they've been arrested over the last three weekends, and one of the protesters is uh, Piers Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn's brother. And he's been calling for the lockdown to be lifted, for 5G to be further investigated, so on and so forth. And yet, over the last few days, there have been people in London, uh, Manchester, and elsewhere turning up in their thousands to protest against the death of Floyd. And they weren't condemned by the media, they weren't told that they were in breach of the lockdown, which of course they were, and nor were they practicing social distancing. No arrests, as far as I can tell. 
one rule for them, another for others. If I wanted to march, I could. I've got a lot that I'm not happy about. I know there are many more like me, the majority, who feel aggrieved. And if they wanted to, could march and have their say. But that's not for us to do. This is now our world after all. And here, another bird by the looks of it. A slightly smaller stalk, if that's what it is. Not the same as what I saw earlier on. Try and get a close-up of that. Churches have also been targeted. Synagogues, one in uh, San Francisco apparently. And uh, just last night Trump went to a church near the White House which was targeted. And he got out his Bible, and yes, I know it's election year, and it was a good photo opportunity for him. And yet the bishop of the church has condemned Trump for going to his church to basically say, we're not going to allow this to continue. Churches won't be targeted. Synagogues won't be targeted. In fact, one synagogue, which was targeted in uh, San Francisco, is Nancy Pelosi's seat. And yet I've heard nothing from her against this attack against a synagogue, or the orphanage, which was attacked last night I think it was and of course Trump <coughs> wanting to take a stand wanting to push back such terrorist groups has been condemned by an apostate bishop you get the governments that you deserve you get the, uh, the church that you deserve as well you really do the governments come and go the church the apostate church sadly seems to stay but to hear this Episcopal bishop condemning Trump and not the protesters is yet another sign of the apostasy that we are living in. I'd like to get these protesters, round them all up, and force them to go back, clean up the streets that they have ruined, wash off the graffiti which they have sprayed, and uh, apologise to the people that they have terrorised. Such groups meeting in London and uh, Manchester in solidarity, close the streets for a long period of time. It was a very awful atmosphere apparently, very intimidating. Yes, some arrests were made of course, but the vast majority were able to come and go as they pleased. Contrast that to the small group at Speaker's Corner being rounded up and sent to different police stations in and around London. I'll tell you something else. Floyd's family and the officer in question, uh, their families will never be the same after this. There are no winners when it comes to this type of an incident. Both will suffer the consequences. Both will have to live with this for the rest of their lives. The whole story will come out eventually, but for now, you've got poor people basically rioting. Some will be arrested, get criminal records. It'll be a lot harder for them to get employed later in life. And yet, people like Beyonce, Madonna, Robert De Niro, uh, Lady Gaga, and other celebrities are stirring it all up, getting these predominantly poor people to march, get shot, perhaps arrested quite likely, and yet these very privileged people are not coming out of their mansions, nor are they linking arms with these protesters to march. They want you to do all the hard work for them. In other words, you take the risks and they bask in the glory. This is what we call exploitation. This is a good picture of somebody being radicalized and not even knowing it. Obama could call for such to go home. His wife has made one brief statement and yet I haven't seen him on the streets, I haven't seen his wife on the streets, I haven't seen Pelosi on the streets. Or in this country, I haven't seen Corbyn on the streets, or other far left wing politicians. There have been some minority groups in uh, London over the last couple of days, but they just want to be pictured. <coughs> They don't really care about poor people or the gentleman in question, Floyd, or the officer in question. And of course there are two sides to every story. That should be obvious. But only Satan really benefits from this particular story, this particular incident. There's no winners uh, when it comes to uh, getting to the bottom 
of this particular story. Let justice take its place. There are many people who have a right to have their say, but yet as a Christian I don't find any scripture for that. I can think of several subjects that I'd like to protest over, but I know that for here and now that's not my remit. My remit is to get the gospel out, not to cause a commotion or an incident which then gets uh, quickly out of control. So I'm going to wrap this message up. Uh, I've been out longer than I thought. It's a very hot day, but it's a very beautiful day. And I just hope if anybody's watching this video, in America especially, they get off the streets, they pray for their local government, pray for the police, pray for the firefighters, pray for the paramedics, pray also for the family of uh, George Freud and uh, the officer Shavin or Shavin. Both families are suffering. Both families are going through an awful time at the moment. Most of the protesters don't actually care about George Freud. Or is it Floyd? I forget his surname. Or Shavin. Uh, this is really about bashing Trump. Smashing up people's communities. Causing as much damage as is possible. Fruit of evolution, absolutely. More sin, more wickedness, a further departure from sanity and a greater embrace of witchcraft, satanism, immorality, promiscuality, anarchy, socialism, communism. In fact, the left wing have always been the most dangerous. Not so much the right wing, it's the left wing. If you don't believe me, check out uh, Vladimir Lenin. Check out his record sometime, or Joseph Stalin, or Pol Pot from Cambodia, or Tito from Yugoslavia, or Idi Amin from uh, Uganda. We always talk about Mao Zedong and other Chinese leaders, but there are other leaders who are just as infamous and have killed just as many people and have put down any of their opponents. Unfortunately, there are some right-wing groups who are still uh, part of the problem, not the solution. Fox News is pro the Catholic Church and they give the Catholic Church an easy ride. Historically, the Church of Rome has been the most uh, wicked when it's come to trying to put people down. And yet when it comes to free speech, I don't want to take your free speech from you. I'm, I'm happy for you to have your say. I won't seek to shut you down. But I think you'd want to shut me down, wouldn't you? You wouldn't afford me the same rights that I would afford you. I don't want you to be silenced. If you disagree with me and my narrative, so be it. I won't be jumping up and down, but I know that you don't agree with what I'm saying. And you want to shut me down and censor me. And that goes back to the power of the left, the left wing. Yes, Franco was on the right and uh, Pinochet was on the right. There aren't any right wing leaders anymore, not really. Putin basically is on the left and uh, he's also in the same category to some extent as Tito and uh, other past left-wing leaders but the left have always been more vicious more cruel more dictatorial the right wing have been predominantly Catholic fascist like a Franco like Hitler and yet even now such are no longer with us really you're seeing a huge rise in the power of the left and the media are stoking the flames. Politicians are stoking the flames. The media and their friends are stoking the flames. Multi-millionaires living in parts of the world. The Bahamas also and Switzerland and other beautiful parts of the world not wanting to leave their mansions and yet are calling on poor people to march and basically risk their lives and some will. Some will, and only the devil really gets any glory out of all of this. If you are a Christian, you have no business marching with these people. And if you are a Christian, you shouldn't be taking sides either. You need to be non-partisan. Don't allow yourself to get caught up uh, in such a frenzy. That Episcopal bishop in Washington should be ashamed of himself attacking Trump for holding a Bible in his hand outside of his church. And it's probably fair to say in the next two to three days, the U.S. Army 
perhaps will be mobilized and yet I think by the weekend things will start to calm down and uh, if Obama wants to come out and his family and other powerful left-wing groups to say enough's enough get off the streets they would but he won't he has an agenda like these college professors university professors pushing evolution encouraging a further departure from God sanity and the truth and of course it's all going to end in absolute misery in the filthy waters of sin and on that statement so I will sign out and wish you every peace and blessing in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen.